Praise the name of the Lord. Good evening, everybody. My, my sincere apologies. You cannot imagine how much my heart has been here. God bless you. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, help us tonight in the name of Jesus. Open up scripture within the few minutes that we have. And in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare that our lives will never be the same. Amen and amen. Please be seated. Thank you. Hallelujah. Pastor Larry, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, bear with me tonight. We'll be here for just uh, maybe, I'll just share for five, ten minutes. Pastor Larry already. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Genesis chapter 1. Let me just lay a foundation and then we'll pray. Genesis chapter 1. Thank you, Jesus. God himself began to give his definition of power. We're discussing the subject of power. And the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then verse 2 gives us a situation he says the earth was without form theologically speaking verse 2 is called the gap theory it's an attempt to explain what happened from the original beginning one verse one is not the beginning of the creation of man no you know this theologically speaking that between genesis 1 verse 1 and genesis 1 verse 2 was a very long time period but the Bible is usually written in summary. Are we together? So Genesis 1 verse 2 says the earth, for whatever reason, was now without form. And you know that this happened as a result of the judgment of Lucifer. Hallelujah. It was the judgment of Lucifer and the then inhabitants that produced the darkness that is here. It's from the Hebrew word tohu wa bohu. It means confusion and chaos. The same word that is used in Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. He says, for darkness shall cover the earth. So the Bible says, Genesis, let's go back to Genesis, Genesis 1 and verse 2. He says, the earth was without form, and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Bible says, the Spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the waters. Then, Verse 3 gives us the classic definition of power in the kingdom. It says, and God said, and there was. That according to God's own testimony is the definition of power. And God said, forget about what he said. And God said, and there was. That means until you attain this status in the spirit, where you sustain the ability to say and then it becomes you are not walking in power so this is the benchmark we will begin to explore different levels and layers of power but just to give you a picture that this is where we are headed to a point where like God we will say and there will be this right here is the definition of dominion this right here is the definition of authority this right here is a definition of power and God said let there be light and the Bible says and there was light but there is one more test next verse whatever it is that you say if it is not good it is not power Are we together now? That number one, you must sustain the ability to say. And to say means you must have knowledge. We're coming to that tomorrow. You cannot say until you know. There is a relationship between light and speech. But that these are the dynamics of dominion. I'm introducing terminologies we're going to pray. I promise 10 minutes. <laughs> Remember. Hallelujah. Are we together now? So God is not just recreating the earth. He's, he's showing us the vastness 
of what dominion and power is that he says and then it becomes and that what he says he must see also that it is good and God saw the light that it was good it is possible to say a thing and it becomes but what you see is not good remember for anything to be accredited as coming from above it must be good and perfect that's what the Bible tells us that every good gift and every perfect comes from above from the father of light in whom there is no variableness or shadow of turning so this here is our journey in this conference to get to a point where like him if it is true that we were created in his image Genesis 1 and verse 22 and Elohim said let us in fact the Bible says Genesis 1 26 26 not 22 26 and God said let us make man the first time recorded where man was made in the image and the likeness of God you must understand that before now there had been other humanoid species but none of them were ever created in the image and the likeness of God they were only created in the likeness of God the image of God means his character his character his glory his likeness means the way he functions the first time God will combine two principal attributes that makes him God in the making of man that means the verification that he got it right is that the man must be able to say like him and also see it become when you make a product there are parameters and you can test there is a quality control system so Genesis 1 verse 26 is that God made man in his own image he supervised the making and you know that to make man is in, in his image means to make man in Christ because Christ is the image of God so because man lost his identity Christ came as the image of God now as a marking script a reference point so that man can compare himself whether he has matched that standard or not one of the reasons why Jesus came was not just to die one of the reasons why Jesus came was not just to take us to heaven he came as a correction of our understanding about God then he came as a correction of our understanding about us. Are we together now? So, this is where we are going to. And all the equippings that can make us walk in that level of authority and power was given to us. His image and his likeness. His image is all that makes him God is contained and expressed in one word glory kabod doxa the weightiness the essence of a thing he gave it to us that was the one thing Lucifer wanted Lucifer already had the likeness of God but not the image of God so he wanted it and then he was judged and for the character of love is that it gives so to prove that it was not God's insecurity that made him judge Lucifer, he gave what Lucifer was looking for to dust. You see? Because it was, if God did not make man, you could charge him with insecurity. And perfect love cast out fear. Is that true? So if it is true that God is love, there should not be fear in him. And so he gave what Lucifer wanted to show that it is not that I am withholding it, is that you did not subscribe to my patterns let's wrap up with 1 verse 28 this is our introduction for this did, did we greet good evening I'm not I'm not sure if we there should be Paul who always start with salutations and then he will say greet so, so so and so for me tell them I'm watching them they are doing well and so on and so forth and, the, and God blessed them and said unto them be fruitful multiply replenish the earth subdue it have dominion over the fish of the sea the real emphasis there is not the fish but the sea are we together now 
have dominion over the sea this is a realm have dominion over the air this is another realm have dominion over the earth is another realm you see the same tripartite manifestation the sea the air the earth and this is also the boundary of demonic oppression the sea the earth there is no enchantment that can operate except by the cooperation of these elements the sea so he says the sun shall not smite you by day nor the moon by night why you have dominion over them every enchantment depends on the light of the sun or the moon to walk and God said let there be and there was and God said let there be and there was so when you get to a point in your life where you understand the dimensions of this authority like him you can say let there be infinite possibilities let there be and then there would be he tested this on on adam the bible says the animals were there but they had no identity he says adam was mandated to give them a name not to call them lion it was not Ab adam that called lion lion he was scientist to call it lion means to give it its functional identity he was the one that defined the behavior of the animals. And the Bible says, and whatsoever Adam called them, that was the name thereof, consistent with this law. Now, but something happened to man. So we say, let there be, and then it does not happen. When Jesus now came, they now found a man who was accurate in that pattern. Until then, they saw the prophets manifesting dimensions of it. But they would fail once in a while. Nobody got it 100%. But when Jesus came, what manner of man is this that even the winds and the waves, he could now say, Shalom. And like Genesis, there will be. And he will see that it is good. There was only one instance recorded where he said and it did not happen jesus the bible says he marveled as god what could be the limitation it can't be the absence of power that i would say he said he marveled at their own belief so there is a possibility that you can have power and say and it will not work because the recipient there is a condition that the recipient must be for it to work are we together now the reason why God said and it was without interruption is because at the time he was saying there was no man to interrupt him with unbelief but from the moment he made man he now had to depend on the faith of that man so it is always the spirit and the bride if there were no man on earth the earth will become in one day consistent with the will of God but because as long as there is one human will left that needs to cooperate with God it can make God look like he is helpless rise up on your feet let's pray